They had a friendship. I don't know why their friendship fell out. They friendship was before Diddy, I mean, before Biggie and Pops. So I don't know why they fell out. I know every girl that Tupac had, Puff wanted and got. So all right, what happened was is that uh, I guess Pocket got whiffed that Jay-Z was in town. Well, you know he gonna do a show because Jay-Z, he doing a show. But you gotta realize Jay-Z had became an enemy of Pac because I think he had said some uh, he was gonna do a song with Big or whatever like that, the whole nine yards. So Jay is now Pac enemy. So it was just good business just to chill out with that. But they was trying to chill out the whole thing. They had a big meeting and Puff would send a representative or let uh, Zip or Chaz represent them in the meeting. And, 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 and then it came out. Big Gene, Diddy's former bodyguard, has made shocking claims about Diddy's rivalry with Tupac. He alleges that Diddy couldn't stand Tupac's close friendship with Biggie and even paid Eric Vaughn Zip a million dollars to deal with Tupac. This revelation could lead to an FBI investigation that might uncover Diddy's involvement in the Tupac shooting. It was a relationship between Tupac and Big, and he also went on to say that Diddy, he wanted to be friends with Tupac, but Tupac wasn't interested. Diddy and Tupac was friends at first, bro. I remember the time me and uh, Diddy rolled up to Pac in, uh, I think it's the, what's the name of the club? The Roxy. There was some kind of concert going on and they was talking and everything. They had a friendship. I don't know why they friendship fell out. They friendship was before Diddy, I mean before Biggie and Pop. So I don't know why they fell out. I know every girl that Tupac had, Puff wanted and got. So, did he have uh, jealousy? Yeah, he had a jealousy of Pop. But I think that it was more so that he knew Big was the meal ticket. And that Pop wanted Big to be with him with Thug Life, but he didn't have the money at the time. And when Big gave him got the money from Puck. Pac gave him the blessings to go with him, but he also told Big that he had to watch Puff because Puff was going to rob him blind. So you believe Kurt Burroughs when he say that, you know, Diddy, he was jealous of the relationship between Tupac and Big? I don't know if I could say he was jealous with his relationship with Big. I just, he didn't like Pac. It's something that happened between Pac and him that he didn't like it. So if my man or somebody that I'm working with is dealing with somebody I don't like, I'm gonna have a dislike for that relationship they have. I don't just think it's jealousy. I think it more was just a dislike and a hatred that somebody I'm working with is working with somebody that I don't like anymore or I got a problem with. So you feel like it was intentional when Diddy was getting with, you know, the same woman that Tupac already had? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I think it's a, I think it was I think that he purposely went after the girls that dealt with Pop. Why you think he did that on purpose? Because when you have an envy of someone, remember Puff tried to get that juice movie and juiced, but they gave it to Pop. So when you have an envy of somebody, if you can't beat them, the closest thing you could do is have what they got. Have what have what they had or try to get what they got. Yeah, that makes sense. And Kirk Burroughs, he also said in this interview that Diddy, he would encourage Biggie to make songs that was beefy. I don't think Kirk Burroughs was correct on that because Biggie didn't write around Puck. Big always wrote wherever he wrote at and then went to record. If he wrote anything or came up with some kind of concept or something, you're not gonna find 
too many times Big and Puff was in the studio together where Big was recording. Puff may come in after the work is done and then add his little, take that, take that. Bad boy, bad boy. But Big always records, cause like when we were doing the, uh, the music to uh, Bone Thugs and Harmony, Big said, I ain't writing shit. He sat there and smoked up all their weed. And he waited till he got to New York. And then came back with the song. Flipped their whole style. Big didn't ever write around nobody. Looked like Puff had no... Puff never, you know, told Big what to write or what not to write. Everyone knows Tupac had a keen intuition and could sense people's true intentions. He likely saw through Diddy and chose to distance himself, feeling that something was off. Afraid to come out his hotel room because of Pac. All right, what happened was is that uh, I guess Pac had got whiffed that Jay Z was in town. Well, you know he's gonna do a show because Jay Z he doing a show. But you gotta realize Jay Z had became an enemy of Pac because I think he had said some or uh, was gonna do a song with Big or whatever like that. The whole nine yards. So Jay is now Pac enemy, too. So Chaz Williams, who was over Black Hands. Black Hands is one of the labels who did that uh, Black Gang. Every artist in New York on. And Chaz, who is now getting into the music business, uh, has become a music executive. And he was once a former gangster who was on uh, American Gangster BET. Cause they had it down, had them down for robbing 161 banks. That's what they put in their program and everything. But Chaz was a gangster in New York City that became a music executive. So he gets a phone call saying that Jay is not gonna come out the room because Tupac threatened him. <laughs> so he's not gonna do his show. Can he make some phone calls? You understand? To um, get off the bullshit. So I think he may have talked to Big D and Big D and Eric B called Suge and Suge was laughing saying that wasn't him. Because they tried to make it seem like it was Suge that was doing it. But it was Pop. So, um, so I guess Suge called Pop. Pop let him go ahead and do his show and everything like that. But Jay was scared to come out of his room. So that story was really true about Jay-Z being afraid to come out of his hotel room. Yeah, come on, man. Yeah, no, yeah, you scared. Probably still is scared. <laughs> yeah, that's crazy, man. And Shook, he told Pac to chill out. Yeah, Shook told Pac to chill out. You know what I'm saying? Because, see, they was trying to, see, you got to realize is that it was going to call a dissension because they were trying to start Death Row East Coast. And that would have been Pac, Eric B., and you know what I'm saying, all the dudes here in New York. So then, they're gonna have groups coming back and forth from Cali to New York. So it was just good business just to chill out with that. But they was trying to chill out the whole thing. They had a big meeting and Puck wouldn't send a representative or let uh, Zip or Chaz represent him in the meeting. Yeah, that's a wild story. Yeah, who told you this story, if you don't mind me asking? I was there. Oh, well, I didn't know that, man. I didn't know you was there. So you was there when Jay was scared to come out of his hotel room. I had no idea, man. I used to roll with Chaz every day, bro. And, 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 and then it came out. And then it came out. Somebody else told the story. But that, I, I think it may have been Dame Dash or something like that that told the story. Jennifer Lopez reportedly faced difficulties in her relationship with Diddy. Allegedly, she was forced to carry a gun for him into a New York club, which resulted in her spending a night in jail due to the weapon incident. He said that, you know, when Diddy and Jennifer Lopez broke up, Diddy, he had staffers kept outside, you know, MTV, TRL Studios with signs trying to win Jennifer Lopez back. You know anything about that? Every word. See, what happened was... <laughs> Jennifer had this personal assistant, and I don't know what she owed Puff or what Puff did.
did for her, but he was able to call her and find out everywhere Jennifer was at. You understand? Uh, she was somewhere, he sent a uh, hundred dozen roses and was trying to get Luther Vandross there to sing for her. So, I believe Damien, because I was there when he was making uh, deals with the personal assistants of Jennifer Lopez and finding out where Jennifer was going to be so he could send people over there. You understand? With gifts, roses, and all this other shit. Wow. So he was really trying to wear her back then? Oh, no doubt. No doubt, bro. She wasn't, she wasn't, she, she, they wasn't listening, you know what I'm saying? These guys is hard-headed, man. I used to tell people, yo, when, when he was dating Jennifer, I said, y'all know private eyes was following us, right? P.I.s was following us. And P.I.s would be following, following, following us. And I don't know if Jennifer had the P.I.s doing it. I don't know if Benny Medina, somebody who had some kind of relationship with Jennifer, had private eyes following us to see what Puck was doing. Crazy, man. How you feel about Biggie Small reaction to the video? Or her saying that she wanted to slap Diddy? Well, I think she wanted to slap him way before she saw that video. Big Mother wanted to slap Puff way before that. Because if you ever see her in anything that they ever gave for Big and Puff was there, she was always distanced to him. Because she probably believed after having that conversation with me that Puff played some kind of part in her son dying. Her son death. Because why would he lie to Big's mom and say he didn't know me when all the investigators, the cops, told her, have a conversation with Gene Deal. Gene Deal gave us the information on what happened, what transpired. Why would Diddy tell her that he didn't know me? So she would probably want to smack his face way before that. That just gave her more and more reasons when he seen. Big Gene is not holding back either. He revealed that Diddy always had a problem with Tupac's swagger and influence in the rap industry. I know we're doing this old school taping again and release, but this is something I think y'all will really, really enjoy on this Sunday morning. It's a conversation with somebody that y'all love. Y'all love Mr. Gene Deal. And so I get a lot of conversations or I get a lot of requests in the comment section. And man, y'all do it. You and Gene need to do a set now. You and Gene need to do an interview. And I'll be like, dang. Is it, we got that many new uh, people that's in the comment sections. Shit, me and John did one with him about four or five years ago. So we decided to put this audio up. We cutting it up because it went a little longer, but we cut it up for you guys. And we decided to put it out and let y'all conversation between Gene and I uh, uh, that we had answering a lot of the questions. It's not going to be no y'all here for P Diddy and Diddy bashing or or a conversation about that. This is not the interview for this. This was all around the surrounding uh, of the identifications and the, the Biggie assassination and Gene and I just talking it out like men. So hey, Sunday morning, drink your coffee or this afternoon it ain't no good games on unless you're in the baseball. Give us 30 minutes of your time and I'll watch this interview. I think you'll learn a lot about it, about where we have our differences at, but how people can have a differences and have a decent conversation. So bomb first, we'll be back at you later on the day, or definitely by first thing in the morning on Monday with some interviews because man, we got a lot of things we're gonna be covering this week. That goddamn Keefe D getting built out. That goddamn whack 100 bailing him out. The Kendrick Lamar situation and all of that stuff. So peace bomb first. Check out the Gene deal. A good friend of mine, Big Gene, who you all know from the YouTube world, just called me. 
He's agreed to answer a few quick questions. You know him from The Real Deal Show. His YouTube channel is popular and often gets more views than mine. So, I want to give a shout out to my boy, Gene. I appreciate him coming on because I enjoy having these conversations. We both know what we've been discussing in our previous chats. So let's see if anyone has any questions. I don't have questions for him since I already know his views, which makes sense to me. As former law enforcement, we both understand that the FBI conducts thorough investigations. I shared everything I witnessed that night and was found credible. If you lie to the FBI, you can face five years in jail. I know what I saw and what happened. There are people coming forward 10 or 15 years later who didn't witness the events and didn't give the same statements I did. I'm retired now and enjoying life, and I'm actually on vacation right now. If anyone has questions, I'm here to answer them now about the whole situation. Jean doesn't believe that Pucci was involved. Jean, could you share your thoughts so people don't have to keep asking about that? I believe the same person who approached me and Puff, whom we both know, was the same individual I mentioned earlier. That person had a messed up face, and I saw a picture of him the day they visited my workplace. When we got to the hospital, I heard someone say that a Muslim killed Big. I remembered seeing a man in a blue suit with a white shirt near us. That's the statement I've given to everyone, and I stand by it because I know what I witnessed. IT seems Diddy viewed Tupac as a threat to his empire and was resentful of Tupac's loyalty to Biggie. Dan Kimmel admitted that he's seen it online and joked. You're telling me I can't believe everything I read, ha? Huh? And Sean Combs jokingly played along saying, what? I don't know what you're talking about. Fans commented the rage in his eyes. Another said weird things going on in Hollywood, I wonder why. And basically people are saying that even though they were joking about it, right? Apparently when Diddy was asked about it, a lot of people could tell that it angered him. Like Kimmel was like, hey, Will Smith and Jade, I tried to have a threesome with your girl. And then allegedly he just looked mad, I don't know. So maybe it's true. I mean, Will Smith and Jada, they be on some freaky stuff, bro. Like Jada Pinkett, that woman is embarrassing, humiliating, and talking down about her man 24-7. Like seriously, if we're talking about Jada now, that woman embarrasses Will 24-7, no joke. But I, I don't know, whatever. There's the report, peace. Big Gene also mentioned that Diddy's shady dealings have led to investigations into various scandals, including the circumstances surrounding his father's murder, adding more weight to the allegations against him. You all know out here in the YouTube world, Big Gene Gill just called me and he great to us for a few questions and answers right quick. And so, uh, we got Gene Gill from the Law Deal Show. I know what his YouTube channel is because uh, he be doubling my, my, my little platform, doubling the triple. But y'all all know the, the cooking master. <laughs> there you go, know Master. <laughs> there you go with your boys. There you go with your boys, man. 
What's going on? This is a bomb first, man. Talk about people. My boy John, I'm sure you heard of John. No John. Can you say what's up to my, my, my people over here? Glad he asked me to come on. I don't mind doing that for So what's up, Rex? I appreciate it. The game, man, man, we ain't go. you know, everybody know what you and I stand on the, uh, on all the, the, the stuff that we are known for. So we just go to say what's up and we talk and uh, see what, what any, anybody got any questions over there. I don't have no questions to ask you about that because I already know uh, your opinion and, and, and it makes sense. It makes sense. I, uh, and I understand why you feel that way. Uh, but, but, you know, you know my opinion as well. Well, you know what? Like, Rex, you know, like, can nobody tell me nothing but what I saw. And I've always been adamant about what I saw and what happened that night. You and I both know that when the FBI do their investigations, they do a thorough investigation. You understand? And uh, I was found credible. And I told them the truth. You and I both being former law enforcement agents, we know if you lie to the FBI, you're going to get five years in the oh, yeah. and you're going to get five years in jail. You know, so um, I know what I saw. I know what happened. We got people coming 10, 15 years later who wasn't there, who didn't give the same statements I gave them I gave now. You know what I'm saying? So I'm not worried about that. Man, I, I, you know, I'm retired. I'm trying to live my life. I'm actually on vacation right now. You call me on vacation. So, you know, I'm just, like I said, I don't know how my time's going to be, and I don't know when you're leaving. So that's why I'm here. So if anybody want to ask a question, as long as that you think that's an eye, some old dumb bullshit, I'll answer. I ain't got no problem with that. Respect. Respect, dude. Um, okay, so... uh. All right, let me hit, I'll just hit up the board and see what y'all got from Big Game. Uh, okay, um, no, sir. Uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. Uh, let's see, do you, come on, y'all, we know that Big Game don't believe that Gucci was involved. Um, Gene, if you're going to tell my people what, what you believe, and, um, just so they won't have to be back to that question about Gucci and all of that, because I know what you believe. And then, um, if you can just explain out to people what you believe, but they won't have to keep asking that question. I believe the same Muslim who walk up to me and puff that you and I both know and your man said that he saw the picture. The picture that they showed me the night, the, the day that they came to my job and we was in the hotel. Of me, puff and the Muslim and his face was messed up. That same Muslim was the name, I guess the name is Amir Muhammad or Harry Phillips or whatever. Walked up to me and Pump Car. Five minutes later, he walked in down, and after he walked up to me and Pump Car, he walked in the direction uh, to the corner. I didn't see him no more, I didn't keep my eye on him. Lil C, when we got to the hospital, Lil C said, a Muslim killed big. And I said he had a, and I said, one of the security guys said, a Muslim, I said, yo, did he have a blue shirt? I mean, a blue suit, white shirt, blue bow tie, see that looking man? He said, yeah, Gene, how you know? I said, he walked up to our car first. So that's the same statement I gave everybody. That's the same statement. I'm sticking with it, and I know what I saw, and I know what happened. Okay. Diddy apparently saw Tupac as a threat to his empire and was resentful of Tupac's loyalty to Biggie. When I said, if I'm wrong, and I, I told you to tell Greg Cade that if I'm wrong, prove me wrong, show the picture. He said they had the picture. Am I wrong or am I right, Reggie? He said that on, on our stream, uh, that he had the picture. He said All right, that so prove me wrong. wrong. I didn't get the picture, and um, I didn't get the picture. I got it right, because he said that wasn't the correct picture. That wasn't the picture he was talking about. Right, yeah. exactly. So he knows the picture I'm talking about. Yeah. You understand? They know the picture I'm talking about. They showed me a picture. They told me, listen to me. And Greg Caden was, had nothing to do with this investigation uh, uh, way back when in 97, when Correct. it came to my job. Correct. You understand? Yeah. He had nothing to do with that investigation. The cops, cats, and all of them told me, we're going to fix the photo and bring you back out there. We'll be back out there in two weeks. Now... 
They never came back out there and they never brought me there. The next time I heard it was doing a deposition from Miss Wallace. You understand? So now, if they were interested in getting the, 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 the killer big, they had the photo. They had a law enforcement agent who said he saw him walk in that direction. You understand? So now, if they were interested, they would have took care of that right then and there. Okay. Okay. Um, I, I got a question. Diddy apparently viewed Tupac as a threat to his empire, harboring resentment towards Tupac for his loyalty to Biggie.